The ACI 318 anchoring provisions are complex and time-consuming, but if the structure is in a seismic zone, then the ACI anchoring seismic provision apply too. But how do you apply the anchoring seismic provisions? What are the options? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss an overview of the ACI anchoring seismic provisions. Let's get started. The ACI anchoring seismic provisions are included in the Chapter 17 of the ACI 318-19, and they apply to structures in seismic design categories C, D, E, and F. One important seismic parameter to consider is omega zero, which is called the overstrength factor. Most seismic force resistance systems rely on inelastic deformations to dissipate energy. However, the inelastic behavior of some members and components is known to be poor. These kind of members need to be affected by an overstrength factor to force them to work in the elastic range. An example of these kind of members is the columns and the column base plates, according to the AISC seismic provisions. For anchor rods in tension, the ACI allows to waive the seismic provisions if the seismic tension is less than the 20% of the total tension for that load combination. Otherwise, the seismic provisions apply. The first option is called the option A. In that option, the anchorage is designed for E without any amplification, for non-yielding plate, and for ductile anchorage. This is the best option, but uh, there, there are some limitations that apply. Since the anchorage has to be ductile, the material of the anchor has to be ductile as well. F1554 complies with all the requirements for a ductile material. In addition, there should be a stretch length of a minimum of eight ball diameters. When the design is performed per option A, a ductility check needs to pass in order to finish the design. And this check means that the ductile ratio has to be at least 1.2 times the non-ductile ratio. If this check passes, then the design is okay and the design is complete. If the ductility ratio fails, then there are two more options, option B and option D. In both options, the design is performed per E omega zero. So it's an amplified seismic force. Option B means that the plate will be yielding and the anchorage will be non-yielding. Remember that the AISC recommends that the plates should not be yielding. So option B is probably not the best alternative to choose. The, the another option is option D, which is designed for non-yielding plate and non-yielding anchorage. In, in this case, the seismic force is amplified by omega zero, the full, the full factor. So both the plate and the anchorage remain elastic. We discussed the seismic design of anchors in tension. For seismic design of anchors in shear, the philosophy is similar. When the seismic shear is less than 20% of the total shear in the load combination, the ACI allows to waive the, the seismic provisions. On the other hand, if the seismic shear is more than 20% of the total shear of the load combination, then the seismic provisions apply. There are two options. Both are for E omega zero. So it's an amplified seismic force. Option A means yielding plate and non-yielding anchorage. And option C means non-yielding plate and non-yielding anchorage. Option C means that the design has to be performed for the full amplified seismic force. As you can see, the structural engineer has to decide what member to remain elastic and what member to yield to dissipate energy uh, inelastically. For anchor rods in tension, the option A is the best because the anchorage is, is ductile. As you can see, in shear, we don't have that option. The option A doesn't exist for, uh, for a shear because it's unlikely that the base plate will deform inelastically when it moves laterally. So in shear, we have only two options, option A and option C. The first one implies a yielding plate, which is not recommended, and the second is the amplified seismic shear. But this is an overview of the full range of options, both in tension and in shear, that the ACI seismic provisions give to the designer. To show how all this has been implemented in ASIP still, I have prepared a quick example. It's a base plate by Axial, 17 by 17. So we have a portion of the base plate in compression, this blue area. 
and in the white area you know, is in tension, so these anchor rods have some tension forces. If we go to the load tab, I have input some seismic forces also, moments and shears. And let's say now that the project is in a seismic design category B, so the ACI seismic provisions uh, don't apply. If we go to the materials tab, so the seismic provisions area, this checkbox is not checked, so the seismic provisions are not being applied right now with these loads and these conditions. If we go to the other glance tab, we can see here that everything is passing in this example. You know, the anchorage se section, intention is 0.29, in shear 0.46, and interaction is 0.58. So the design is acceptable as it is right now. But if the seismic provisions apply, if we check this box, then the design is no longer acceptable. If we go to the show parameters in this dial box, here we enter SDS and we enter omega, omega zero. These uh, are some typical values for, for omega zero for different systems. And here at the bottom, we specify the options that we just discussed. In uh, tension, the option A, uh, which is the ductile anchorage that we are selecting in this example. That means that in tension, the anchorage will be designed for E without any amplification. For shear, we are selecting the option D, which is the amplified shear force. And the design is overstressed basically in shear, 1.37. If we go to the detail tab, here in seismic provisions, we can see here the calculation of the 20% uh, limitation. The tension due to seismic alone is three kips, and the 20% of the total tension in the, in the load combination is 1.2, so the seismic provisions apply. If we scroll down to the anchorage design section, we can see here the load combinations that apply, which includes the seismic provisions as well for both for retention and in shear here. For example, here we, we can see here 3.0 E, 3.0 is omega, omega zero. And we can verify that if we go to the load combinations. These are the load combinations that includes omega zero. That's because the seismic provisions are being applied in the current uh, design. So for this example to pass, we do need to arm more anchor rods to resist the shear. We go to the anchorage tab, shear analysis. Maybe we need to weld the washers to the base plate so that all anchor rods are effective in shear. Let's do that. We can see that the ratio in uh, shear is now 0.87. The combined stress ratio for the interaction is 1.02. Is a little bit overstressed, two percent, but probably acceptable for practical purposes. With this, we conclude the presentation of the overview of the ACI anchorage seismic provisions. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.